Hey everyone, welcome to What's New Andrew. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of all the new videos that I put out. Today, we're gonna to take a look at putting Home Assistant on a Proxmox hypervisor. This is a great way to increase resources as your Home Assistant setup starts to grow. So if you're interested, follow along. Let's get Home Assistant running on Proxmox. When we install Home Assistant on a Proxmox hypervisor, we can't use the normal way to install with the uh, Raspberry Pi imager. So instead, we're gonna to have to get one of their alternative images. We'll go to the link here, which is the, uh, the Home Assistant archive for all their alternative images. I'll have the links to all of these down in the description below. But here we can get VirtualBox, uh, Proxmox, VMware, any one of these we want. We're gonna actually get the Proxmox one, but we're not gonna download it. We're gonna right click and say copy link address. We'll go back to Proxmox and in the hypervisor machine, not in one of your virtual machines, we're gonna click on shell and we're gonna type wget to download it and put that uh, path that we just had in there. Hit enter and it'll go ahead and download the file. If you notice the file is in a .xz file format, which is kind of like a .zip file. So we're gonna say unxz and we're gonna type the uh, file name and hit enter. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and extract that to a QCAL file name or a QCAL file. And then we'll use that to actually import that into our virtual machine that we're gonna create. So we'll let this finish. As soon as it's done, we'll start building our virtual machine. Let's go up to create VM. Then here we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Home Assistant. Hit next. In here, I'm gonna say, do not use any media because we're gonna actually use that file we just downloaded. That's gonna be our boot disk. We're gonna say next. We're gonna change the machine type to a Q35. We're gonna change the BIOS, BIOS to OVMF. And for the storage, you wanna choose your local storage here. Uh, and go ahead and uncheck pre-enroll keys because we're not doing anything like a Microsoft machine or anything like that. Hit next, the disks. Sounds counterintuitive, but we're gonna delete those because we're actually gonna, again, use that uh, file we just downloaded. We're gonna to go to the CPUs. Here you wanna have at least two. I'm gonna put four, just to put four. And here you wanna have uh, four gigs. I'll just do it and go ahead and do four gigs. For the network, set it up however you need it. If you need to do a, a VLAN or anything like that, I'm not doing anything like that because it's gonna go ahead and set it with a, a static IP at the other end on my router side. I would recommend you do a static IP for Home Assistant because uh, some things are, are very useful to have a static IP if you uh, run a VPN off it or if you run MQTT brokers, things like that. So we'll hit uh, next. Don't start it yet. So don't check uh, start after created. We'll hit finish. And now we've got the machine built and ready, but we need to actually attach that uh, storage to it or that uh, boot disk to it. So let's go ahead and do that with this command. Okay, so the command we're gonna use is QM import disk. So that's gonna import that disk that we downloaded into VM100. 100. 100 is the name of what I have up, or the number of the one I have up here. Uh, it'll take this QCAL file and put it into our local machine, our local storage. So we'll go ahead and enter and let it start importing everything into that. And once it's done, we'll be able to start up our machine with just a couple more steps. Okay, everything's imported, transferred into the uh, virtual machine. So let's go over and click on the virtual machine. We're done with uh, working in the hypervisor at this point. So let's go ahead and click on hardware and you'll notice there's an unused disk here. We'll double click on that. If you're using an SSD, if you're not using a regular hard drive, go ahead and hit that disk discard, that'll be helpful for it. And then we'll hit add. Now we have the disk set. We're gonna go ahead and go to options and say boot order. And this is where we wanna tell it to boot to that disk. So now we have that disk set as our boot disk. We don't want it to try and boot to a CD-ROM. We don't wanna to try to do a network boot. Just go straight to that, uh, that disk. So we'll say, okay. Uh, you'll also wanna check this to yes to start at boot because if, uh, if you reboot the, the hypervisor, you definitely want your home assistant to start up as well. So now we are done with all the, uh, the stuff to set it up. We're just gonna hit start It'll go ahead and start the uh, the machine, boot into Home Assistant, and install everything for us. So we'll wait for that, and then we'll see that we uh, can log in and go ahead and set up our, our accounts for Home Assistant. 
Okay, it's all done and it's booted up. So let's go ahead and log into the web interface. We'll go ahead and bring that up. We put in our IP address, which in my case is 10.0.0.153 and uh, colon 8123, which is the port number. That's kind of standard for Home Assistant. And when we go in there, we'll see that it's still doing some, uh, some final housekeeping. Go ahead and let this finish, depending on how many cores and how much RAM you gave it, uh, it'll take more or less time. But once this is finished, you'll be able to log into it. And there we go, we're all done. Let's go ahead and create my smart home. So we'll give a, a name, we're gonna go ahead and say Andrew. Username we'll leave as Andrew. Password, the one I love to use, password one, two, three. Don't ever use that one. We'll say create account, give a location. We're gonna say we're in Amsterdam, just for the fun of it. Country, we'll go with United States, since that's where I am. We'll hit next. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm not gonna use any of these. These are some of the things that I have on my network. So there you go. You now have Home Assistant running on a Proxmox hypervisor. You can bump up the resources to meet the needs that you have, and you're not stuck on just using a, a Raspberry Pi or similar device. And now you can start adding things like MQTT broker integrations. You can add Node-RED to do automations. I'm gonna have videos for all of that. So I hope you learned something here. I hope you give it a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.